without any questions being put. So would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons. And I call on Kenneth Gibson to open the debate around seven minutes, please, Mr Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to begin by thanking those colleagues who supported my motion regarding the removal of phone boxes across Scotland. I'd also like to thank Brian uh, Whittle and Jamie Green, who are present in the Chamber today to discuss an issue which affects a great number of people in a variety of tangible ways. And I'd also like to thank Mark Dames and Mark Johnson of British Telecom for taking the time to discuss this issue a fortnight ago before this debate was even scheduled. When I, first informed, was, when I was first informed of the decision taken by BT to remove 947 pay boxes across Scotland, including 24 boxes located in North Ayrshire, I was immediately concerned about the impact this would have on my constituents. And while significant efforts have been made to improve mobile infrastructure across the UK, Many areas within Scotland still receive only a partial mobile phone signal, which is both unreliable and inconsistent. These so-called not spots are not only frustrating when trying to send a text or make a call, but can prove dangerous in the case of an emergency. This concern is of particular relevance to those living on Scotland's islands, such as Arne and Cumbria in my own constituency, where mobile coverage can be extremely poor, thus increasing isolation for island residents, as well as affecting the many tourists who visit our islands each year and who are consistently surprised by just how sporadic signal provision can be. Due to these concerns, I consider it a priority to meet with BT to discuss the reasoning behind this decision and fully understand the impact it would have on the people of Scotland. And I'm grateful for BT for engaging with MSPs on this issue. I would like to share some of what we discussed uh, today. Firstly, it's undeniable that our telephone usage and relationship with technology have been dramatically transformed in recent times. 93% of all adults now own a mobile phone, and as such, payphone usage across the UK has declined by 90% over the past decade. In fact, not one call was made from more than 700 BT kiosks over the last year, demonstrating just how little use they are in some locations. And I'm not surprised that when we have access to devices that allow us to make calls, send texts, check emails, browse internet and even play games, call boxes are no longer used in the way they once were. In light of this, perhaps our focus should now be even more on increasing mobile coverage and reliability in remote and rural areas in particular, which currently do not enjoy the same connectivity as the rest of Scotland. I would, like, I would like and hope to see more initiatives such as a pilot scheme launched in 2016 by then Ellen's Minister Derek Mackay, which saw non-domestic rates relief on new mobile masts offered in two locations on Arne and one in Cairngorm to encourage the provision of mobile services and further investment in these areas. Such projects would mean that phone boxes would no longer be a necessity and those living in Scotland's rural areas would be able to enjoy the full range of mobile services. It's also worth noting that prior to this decision, BT entered into consultation with local authorities across Scotland with 1,500 payphones originally earmarked for removal by 2020. Following consultation, which also allowed communities to voice their concerns over the removal of essential payphones, BT agreed to drop the number to 957, meaning that we'll see the removal of some 433 boxes across Scotland uh, with a, a further 111 um, um, being um, taken over by the Adopt a Kiosk um, initiative, as opposed to the loss of a third of all current payphones as was initially uh, proposed. This demonstrates BT's willingness to engage with those who rely on payphone services most and to protect services where they're deemed vital. And I'm also pleased to highlight that after reviewing the consultation responses, the decision was made not to remove any payphones on any Scottish island. Um, this will guarantee the safety of island residents and visitors as these phone boxes can act as a lifeline in the emergency situation. Payphones have also been protected with a consultation identified a social need for the box, such as accident black spots, suicide hotspots, and coastal payphones where connectivity may indeed prove life-saving. Other boxes were protected when meeting a number of criteria such as uh, the payphone being within 800 metres, used to make at least uh, uh, 12 calls within a 12-month period, and located with a local population is not fewer than 500 households within one kilometre of the payphone. Uh, finally, I'd like to draw attention to BT's Adopt a Kiosk scheme, which was introduced in 2008 and offers local authorities, charities and communities the opportunity to adopt their local phone box for just one pound and transform it into an asset for the community as an alternative to removal. 
Following consultation, as I mentioned earlier, 111 phone boxes are currently being considered for adoption with an exciting and eclectic mix of transformed kiosks already in use across Scotland and indeed some 3,000 across the UK. Some boxes are fitted with life-saving defibrillators, tiny libraries, or miniature art galleries that have been maintained by local communities in Scotland uh, and indeed in uh, England, uh, many coffee shops and meditation space have even been created. So there's a wealth of opportunity and inspiration for transforming poorly maintained and unused phone boxes into a unique and creative community solution. In fact, this is in, uh, exactly the, the kind of, albeit modest, community empowerment I'd like to see more of in my own constituency of Cranium North. And I would encourage uh, everyone watching this debate to consider if a phone box in their locale could become something eye-catching, essential, or indeed just a bit of good fun. And what's interesting is when we look at these 111 boxes, uh, 28 are in Angus, 18 in Fife, but none are in 18 local authorities, including my own uh, of North Ayrshire. So that's something that I will personally be pursuing. Um, I should point out, of course, when we're fighting to retain call boxes, that BT uh, currently uh, lose some £20 million a year in retaining these. And while there is a, a, a real issue of retaining them in, in rural areas in particular, some, and I, I would say only some um, urban areas, are not so keen because of perceived uh, concerns that these call boxes actually cause in some communities, and BT are very much aware of that. So in closing, I would uh, ask everyone uh, present to remember that connectivity is not just a matter of economic necessity, but a vital part of guaranteeing the safety of our constituencies. And by retaining phone boxes where they're essential, as well as looking at creative and effective solutions to signal coverage in rural and remote areas, we can ensure that everyone has access to telephone services uh, wherever and whenever they need it most. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Gibson. And I call Jamie Green to be followed by Brian Whittle. Or Brian Whittle to be followed by Jamie Green, however you would like it. <laughs> we could toss a coin. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Thank you, Presiding Officer. <clears throat> um, I'd, I'd like to start off, first of all, by uh, thanking Kenny Gibson for bringing this to the uh, less than packed chamber today, but nonetheless, uh, lots of people will be watching this uh, from afar, no doubt, and uh, paying a close interest in what BT's plans are in this. Like, like him, I also engaged with BT to get some background as to what their plans are and also to uh, get a better understanding of, of why they were doing what they were doing. Um, clearly, it's essential that um, any changes to payphones do not hinder the important community needs of a pay uh, call box, such as emergency, access and emergency services, but more importantly, in places where there is no other means of contacting people where there is poor uh, mobile coverage. Uh, Kenny Gibson's motion um, states a fair point that while people do use still payphones, the adoption of smartphones has dramatically increased in recent years. Uh, in the last decade, payphone usage has dropped by over 90%, and that's no small figure. <clears throat> in fact, some phone boxes are used by less than a dozen people a year, and anecdotally, some phone boxes are used by no one at all. So, as is often the case with these things, you don't miss something until it's gone. So usage has very much a big part to play in the decision-making uh, process, I have no doubt. Uh, to comment on the motion itself, uh, BT did want to make clear, however, that of the uh, in terms of removing specific payphones from North Ayrshire. Um, there will be 84 remaining in North Ayrshire, uh, which is slightly more than the 35 stated in the motion. Nonetheless, uh, there will still be a loss of payphones in that part of the world. I also should declare that I live in North Ayrshire and uh, on occasion have been known to use a phone box when uh, uh, my mobile is either out of battery or out of coverage, and that unfortunately still happens uh, more than too often. Um, BT have said that absolutely they wouldn't remove a payphone that has been identified as a social need payphone, and they have set some quite clear criteria for that. Um, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Gibson outlined the criteria uh, in terms of the location and the usage of where those pay boxes are, and if that criteria is met, then a kiosk cannot be removed, and I think that's the right thing to do. It's also worth pointing out that BT consults with local authorities on any proposed removals, uh, and if uh, that authority uh, is against that, then that will be taken into account. So that second level of scrutiny is, is important as well. Um, I think moving on to the issue of the uh, adopt a kiosk scheme, I think you know, really what we're talking about here is finding alternative uses for things that have been made redundant. And some of, not that there are many red phone boxes left, 
uh, but uh, those that are are certainly worth preserving uh, to their fullest. Uh, when I did a quick internet search of some of the uses of uh, adopt a kiosk, I was quite bemused by the images. I encourage you to have a look at what people have done the sheer ingenuity and creativity of people and what they've done with their old phone boxes. Um, they've been turned into an amazing array of purposes. In addition to some of the ones mentioned, I've seen coffee shops, uh, automated uh, coffee vending machines, salad bars, bookcases, uh, and people selling a whole wide range of uh, cottage industry products and services out of the back of a phone box. You wouldn't believe how much you can fit into a phone box. Um, so uh, I think in essence I'd like to support uh, the, um, the, the, the motion and that we should be careful that we're not uh, taking away vital um, uh, access to tele telecommunications points, for, especially for people in rural communities. But we also should have a think about today the fact that not everyone owns a mobile phone. And mobile phones can be prohibitively expensive for people. So even if coverage is available, and I know we'll probably hear on the uh, ambitious plans that the Scottish Government has on ensuring that we do have full connectivity in Scotland, um, mobile phone coverage, like uh, internet access to many, is, is still unaffordable. And uh, the, the, therefore, the, the, the simple um, uh, uh, phone box is a, a cheap and alternative solution to people to make calls. Uh, and, and many people still use them and rely on them for that, that form of, of uh, accessing uh, and, and calling people. So I would say that any removals are done to have, should follow the strict process that BT put in place. Um, and clearly the, any that are removed are ones that have been identified that are simply not being used by the public. I do encourage people to engage in consultations around this. Uh, the old user or loser adage is very important. So I encourage people, if there is one, uh, uh, do make use of it before it may be too late. I urge people in Ayrshire to think about the Adopt Kiosk scheme uh, and some of the creative things that we could do with any that are decommissioned. Uh, and I look forward to seeing the results of that. Thank you. Brian Whittle. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, and my thanks to Kenny Gibson for bringing this debate to the Chamber. Deputy Presiding Officer, the technology we use to communicate continues to evolve at an incredible speed. Hard though it may be to believe the first mobile phone call was made in 1973. Admittedly, for some of us in this chamber, that may feel like last week, but it highlights just how many people today have grown up in a world where you didn't need a physical connection uh, to a phone line to make a call. Well, some of us can recall the days of police call boxes. They are increasingly only known to the people as Doctor Who's preferred mode of transport or a local landmark where you can pick up a coffee on the way to work. But more recently, we've seen the trend of phone boxes and public phone, uh, pay phones being removed through lack of use. Today, Superman wouldn't be changing in a phone box. He'd be using an app to book a short stay in a nearby room for let. This may be an advance in technology, Deputy Presiding Officer, but I'm not convinced it has quite the same drama. I recognise and agree with many of the points highlighted uh, in Kenny Gibson's motion. While the payphone may be a less popular mode of communication today, that doesn't inherently, inherently make it unnecessary. You can quite reasonably argue that those continuing to make use of phone boxes now are the ones who have no suitable alternative, the very people the removal of the boxes could have the biggest impact on. BT do seem to be making significant efforts to minimise the impact these closures will have. They are consulting widely, as has been mentioned, on the removal of each phone box and change their plans when they receive an objection from the local authority. That being said, I do note that one of the criteria for keeping a box in place, even if it isn't uh, regularly used, is the lack of any mobile phone signal. While an emergency call can be placed from any mobile phone anywhere with a signal, even if that signal isn't from the mobile's own network provider, I'm concerned that this is of no benefit in an emergency where a people's mobile phone does not even have a charge. I wonder if perhaps BT have been given any consideration to providing an emergency charging facility in some of the more isolated phone boxes, perhaps by using solar power. Deputy Presiding Officer, I've recently been involved in discussions between the Royal Bank of Scotland, Age Scotland and others around the impact of branch closures in South Scotland. The issue at the core of that discussion is not that different to what we are discussing today. Technology is changing the way many of us perform tasks, whether that is banking, or making a phone call. But for those who aren't in a position to change, there is concern that they will be left isolated and disadvantaged. While companies like uh, Royal Bank of Scotland and BT will always have commercial considerations to take into account when making decisions about closing branches or removing phone boxes, 
It's important they also take the wider impact of communities uh, from whom these services can be a lifeline. There does seem to have been an improvement on this in recent years, and it's clear from the efforts BT have made in their consultation that they do wish to minimise minimi 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 the impact of these removals. I do have reserva reservations around the removal of phone boxes in rural areas, and they're broadly the same concerns I have with the loss of other services. Put simply, do these areas losing traditional services provisions have the infrastructure to support the modern alternative? Be it broadband speed or mobile phone signal, rural areas in particular still experience very real issues with coverage and reliability of digital communications. I note that a, a which survey earlier this week highlighted that three out of five slowest areas of broadband in the UK are in Scotland. Indeed, Scotland has a particularly high number of regions classified as having low speeds with average speeds in parts of the central belt and only Dundee and North Lanarkshire having high average speeds. Deputy Presiding Officer, changing technology means change to how we live and work and is inevitable. But we have a responsibility to ensure, to ensure that no one is left at a disadvantage by that change. That's why, although I'm disappointed by the decision to reduce the number of payphones, rather than fight against this change, I would encourage members to focus their attention on ensuring that the pace of these change is reasonable and that Scotland's digital infrastructure is up to the standard required. Thank you. I call Fergus Ewing to respond to this debate. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you for Kenneth Gibson for bringing this uh, unusual topic uh, to the debate. And as usual, he regaled us with a series of somewhat arcane statistics about the topic, which perhaps uh, many of us knew very little. But it w was an interesting contribution, uh, and I'm also grateful to the other two contributors. Telecoms is reserved to Westminster. The provision of public call boxes does fall within BT's universal service obligations. Uh, we have no locus to intervene. Um, I, however, Ofcom informed me that there has, as members have said, been a very substantial decline in the usage of telephone boxes, 90% in fact, over the past decade. And indeed, many of the proposed removals have not been used to make a single phone call in the last 12 months. So understandably, perhaps, BT has taken action and uh, they published criteria designed to ensure that boxes are retained, either where they're actively used, which is, is, is good, or where there's a social need, also good, I think. And the overriding social need criteria are sites where there is no mobile coverage from any provider, suicide hotspots, uh, sadly, accident black spots, and coastal locations and islands. And BT has confirmed that no removals will be proposed in such areas. And I, I very much welcome that uh, approach taken which uh, I think one can appreciate, uh, may well prove to be very advantageous in extremists in urgent situations. So uh, there we are. Where removals are proposed, BT will consult with the relevant local authority, who in turn can consult locally, for example, with community councils, and I encourage them so to do. Ultimately, the local authority can veto BT's proposed removal if it can demonstrate appropriate uh, grounds. And Mr Gibson highlighted the preservation of uh, phone boxes in, in uh, islands in his uh, uh, constituency. I think he mentioned Aaron, so he's a, a doughty fighter for the preservation of island telephone boxes, presiding officer, amongst uh, a great many other things, I have to say. Um, I, perhaps being not possessed of an extraordinarily active imagination, I wasn't aware of all the things that you could do in phone boxes. It wasn't until uh, the revelatory content of Mr. Green's uh, contribution that I became aware that they could be a coffee shop, a salad bar, a bookcase. I presume not all three at once, but I, I had thought naively that there was not much that one can do in a phone box presiding officer. <laughs> but um, I think I won't go there. Uh, uh, but the, the imagination does struggle to imagine what other activities could be carried out in a telephone box. And, and I hesitate to to uh, make any contributions of potential activities which are flitting through the cranial area just at the moment. Uh, what what I, I would say is that I think the telephone box is a very attractive piece of heritage. It's a nice thing to see around the place. It's uh, part of history. It would be very sad if they all disappeared. I can imagine in 100 years' time if the television program Antiques Roadshow is still uh, 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 being screened as well, it might that uh, there might be a quiz of a telephone box. What was this used for? people would ask in astonishment. Uh, and I do, if I may, uh, just digress a little bit, that 
uh, uh, to reflect on the, the late Ewan Bain, who I know you, you will have known and, and enjoyed the works of as a cartoonist who, whose famous character was the Hebridean character Angus Og, who was the sort of character that found himself in difficult situations of his own making almost every day. And at that time, my mother, if I may say so, was a quite well-known defense lawyer uh, for the criminal fraternity. And Angus Og found himself in this cartoon in a telephone box in possession of a very, very large salmon on the phone saying, hello, Mrs. Ewing, Mrs. Ewing, I'm in a spot of bother. Uh, that was in a telephone box, which uh, goes to prove that there are uses to which they can be put. Uh, presenting officer, before I digress even further from the topic, uh, could I say that, <laughs> uh, could I say that I, I uh, accept in some locations that telephone boxes remain important and the removal will not be appropriate. And I'm more than happy to raise members' concerns should they wish me to do so with any local authority. So I'm very pleased to have, to have this uh, opportunity, albeit an unexpected one, to stand up for the phone box in Holyrood. Well, thank you, everyone. We were thinking there that we might not need to suspend until 2 o'clock when you started to wax lyrical, Mr Ewing. However, this meeting is suspended until 2 o'clock. <laughs>